And now for more on the market and the impact of these world events, let's bring in Jack Ablin, Crescent Capital's founding partner and CIO. Jack, welcome. Good to have you with us. Uh, does this uh, sort of turn of events over the weekend uh, change how you look at portfolios uh, that you manage in any material way? Are you doing anything today uh, in, in response? No, it really hasn't changed anything fundamentally, um, the way we look at things. Obviously, we want to continue to watch uh, ongoing developments. I think there's a, a general sense among the investment community that um, all of the, the, the warring activity uh, will likely stay contained in uh, and around um, Israel and the Gaza Strip area. Um, if, on the other hand, it does spill over, let's say, into Iran uh, or other parts of the uh, Middle East, then I think there's going to be a, a recalculation going on among investors. Well, the bond market is closed today because of Columbus Day. When that reopens tomorrow, how key is that going to be to this entire conversation about the, the true impact of geopolitical risk on the markets? Well, um, based from what, you know, what I can glean, if you just look at TLT trading, it will would suggest that interest rates are headed lower, uh, which I would suspect in this kind of environment uh, would be the case. Um, that's obviously an offset to the higher, uh, higher crude oil prices and likely helping give uh, equities a, a bit of a bid today. So we just heard Mike Santoli talk about this market bottom a year ago this week. Do you see this as an underachieving bull market? I do. In fact, you know, it's funny. I'm glad that um, Mike talked about the difference between the cap-weighted S&P and the equal-weighted S&P, uh, because the fact is that if you look at the cap-weighted S&P on a forward P.E. basis, it really is extended. It's about, you know, between 12 and call it 18 percent overvalued. Uh, if you look at it uh, on a multiple basis. However, if you look at the average stock in the S&P, uh, the equal weighted S&P, the, the, the forward P.E. multiple is really right on target. So I think that the average stock is in, in, in good shape. It's just that magnificent seven, the very, very uh, tip top uh, stocks that are really pushing those um, metrics higher. Uh, are somewhat vulnerable, so if I at least to, on a valuation basis. If I were basis. to put money into an S&P-based index fund today, do I hear you correctly, you would recommend an equal-weighted index fund as opposed to uh, a cap-weighted index fund? Yes. Uh, in, in, in many respects, yes. The only problem, the only difference is um, you are giving up a lot of technology exposure, which yep. in general, I would say tech is not a bad place to be. It's just there are a handful of names that are somewhat over overvalued, and that could make that S&P trade a little more vulnerable. Mm -hmm. What we're doing uh, at Crescent is we're building, we built an SMA based on quality, based on dividend growers. Um, so we still have the tech exposure, uh, but we're looking at the highest quality companies, companies that have the lowest, um, or I'm sure I, I should say the highest um, multiple of, uh, of interest coverage. Yeah, and, and among those, you name Chevron, Gen Dynamics, and Atmos Energy Corp. Uh, those were the three that you uh, wanted to highlight. We're out of time, Jack. Thanks very much. Good as always to see you. Thank you.